Hi everyone, I'm Sandra Ingerman and welcome to the Shaman's Cave. And I'm Renee Barabal, the Practical Shaman, and I'm excited to be here with you for another very important topic. Yeah, so um, Renee and I want to talk about um, uh, what we have gotten from the spirits. We've uh, decided to journey on certain topics and not just talk from our heads, but ask the spirits what they think about things. And so that's what we did uh, with our topic on rest. We both journeyed and got a message. And so uh, the topic that we've been journeying on, I've been journeying on this for a long time, so I didn't do a journey for this show, is what happens when you find out uh, bad news? Uh, how, how do you deal with it? And um, one of the things I, um, as people know, I teach uh, uh, medicine for the earth and healing with spiritual light. And one of the core teachings, foundational teachings of that is our perception creates our reality. So when we hear bad news about let's say somebody just got diagnosed with cancer or um, there's uh, an earthquake and thousands of people got killed. Um, when you perceive this as, um, oh my God, these poor people, this is so awful, this is so terrible, that kind of perception actually uh, creates um, uh, an energy that can be very heavy for people. It can really pull them down. And so in my life, um, my students who have cancer, uh, who get a cancer diagnosis, uh, only tell me. They won't tell anybody else because they know that through my healing, through spiritual light work, that the first thing I hear when they say, um, uh, they got a cancer diagnosis, is I see them in their divine light. I see them in their strength. I see that they have the strength to really get through this. And so I feed the strength. I don't feed the illness. Mm. Yeah, that's really, really important. And as you were talking, I was thinking about for me that there's this other component of it. And I guess this is, this is, it's, it's great when we journey because when we journey, we're going to naturally have a, a point of, you know, differences of how you get information as opposed to how I get information. But this is not about the journey. This is about, um, I think I've mentioned on the show that I was at the airport on Christmas Eve and the phone rang and I got some very disturbing news. And what I, I just finished writing an article for Energy Magazine about this, about how how when you process some some news, and like it's always great to like to be able to to have like Sandra who put me in divine light. I'm sure during that time, but in my own inner scape, in my own inner verse, I couldn't move. I became frozen. I became. You know, I went through a whole process of probably, you know, Kubler and Ross talk about the grief process of actually moving through the stages of something. And when you're involved in your own stages of something that's really devastating, it's sometimes hard to see the way out. Although with good practice and good tools, I had the right people besides for Sandra. I had another friend who tapped with me and did all of that to start to move back to those but that to also know that when we get bad news, there's a natural process that our body in this mundane world goes through as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think because um, I'm referring to the work that I do out there in the world, um, I think it's really good that you're bringing that up when you receive personal bad news, the stuff that you have to go through. For, for me, I'm getting an amazing amount of bad news from other people um, needing uh, help. 
And so for me, I, I don't have time to do anything but really shift my percep my perspective to really see that they can get through this and that I'm needing that strength. And that's my my job is to keep seeing them in their light. Mm -hmm. Because there's an, a very old esoteric principle out there of um, when two or more are gathered. And so when two or more are gathered and are agreeing on bad news versus when two or more are gathered and, um, and focusing on uh, the solution, um, there's a real difference in, mm -hmm. in the results that you get. Um, for me, when I get bad news, I, 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 you know, um, my life has been so filled with depression that, um, I never tried to get myself out of a place, uh, like that. I, I, I want to experience it fully. I don't want to experience it fully. I just do. Um, I'm a feeling person. I feel my way through the world. And so, um, if I get bad news that really affects me, I have to focus on how I'm feeling and what that does to my body. And so, uh, for me, it goes back to the message that ISIS gave me in a journey, um, about, uh, healing for myself is she keeps asking me, what are you feeling this second? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, not what is somebody doing for you or what is somebody saying to you? What are you feeling this second? Mm -hmm. And as you can bring your feelings into the second, not even the moment, into the second, you have the opportunity to uh, be able to feel it and transform it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then I, I was telling you before about this experience where um, somebody else had a very similar experience to me this past week that the experience I had in, in January and his whole approach was not as deeply as feeling as you or I would be talking about it. So like, well, I'm just going to wash it and move on. <laughs> and, and, and like, you know, for me, I froze for a month and a half and, you know, somebody's going to wash it and move on. And so we don't all experience it the same way, but I will tell you about my journey. Uh, so this, the, I took the journey and um, I went to, sometimes I have, I have guides that travel with me and I have got, uh, this, these guys that I sometimes speak to. And so I went to the, the wise, the wise woman and, and I asked, so, you know, how do you, how do you um, experience how, what, what do you do when and what do you do when you experience bad news? And basically she said, well, I just told you that. And when you asked me about the question about the rest, you rest. And I was like, like, like a piece of dough, you'd rest. <laughs> and, and this kind of makes sense. But then I'm there like, no, no, but we're doing a podcast and I want to know more. So all of a sudden she opened up the veil. That's the best way that I could describe what I saw, where all the bad news lives like if there's such a thing as bad news, but that, that it was like, it was closed so quickly because that there's so much out there that you could attach onto that might be perceived as bad news that in my human capacity, I don't need to open that door to look at all of that. But that I was told, you know, you're only given as much as you can perceive only as much as you can handle, which is Something they used to say in AA a lot was, you know, God only gives you enough what you can handle, even though sometimes you feel like it's way more than you, you can. But that, uh, and it made me back think to a healer once who opened up the portal so all of his disciples could could feel what it felt like to channel all of that experience. And I, I was very happy to take my little piece of the bad news back <laughs> yeah yeah for me um uh my focus i think we have different focuses and for me i've been so focused for so long now about i i, I think um 
every book I, I've written since Medicine for the Earth in 2000, I, I actually could have started writing about this before. It's in every single one of my books is uh, The Dangers of Pity. Um, of what? Pity? Pity. Pity, oh. I think, is the absolute. I think it. I think people who pity are cursing people, um, and and I fall into pity sometimes. So I'm not blaming everybody out there. Um, I'm human too. Hmm. Uh, pity is such a heavy, heavy, heavy energy. Um, hmm. It it actually gives people. You put them in a prison. There's no room for them to move when you've thrown um, the example I give is let's say um, a disaster happened to you personally, not to Renee, I'm talking to all of you. And 1 million people found out about it and everybody pitied you. Everybody, 1 million people were saying, oh my God, you poor thing. I feel so sorry for you. That's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. That's what we're doing every day when we read the news. And think about how it would feel for you. How And you don't even know it's happening, but you, you have to, the energy must be pushing you down. How do you get up? when a million people are throwing an energy on you that forces you to stay on your knees or on, uh, uh, down on your face, uh, not being able to get up. So this is such a huge issue for me. Mm -hmm. I've written it in every book. Um, pity is a dangerous, it's a curse. Mm -hmm. and we have to learn that, um, as Renee said, if we're getting lessons to transform and to grow and we're getting what we can handle, then how about feeding the fact that this is um, an opportunity um, for healing to happen personally and collectively and globally for the planet? And so we have to, we have to start feeding the energy that solutions are available and strength is available and that we're spiritual light and we just put on these role these robes and we're playing this play out in the world um uh perceiving people in their strength is such a gift i mm -hmm. mean it's such a gift i know and as teachers and as leaders what i've learned is that it's really hard for me to be vulnerable, like to open up and share to people because then they start throwing the I'm sorry for you and this, you know, and all of that. And it's like, and like somebody said, oh, I'm really sorry you had to go through that experience. And I'm thinking like, well, I don't think so. Sandra told me that I looked stronger and better than she's seen me in years, you know, and, and you're not the only person who said this. Like, no, I think that it was a really powerful initiation because I'm at a pivot point in my life where I'm thinking about what's next? How how do I trans transfer into uh, this next level of my wisdom? Like if I don't want to work a full-time job anymore, how do I move there? But first I had to see some of the places in my life that were, were through a, a situation that might be considered as bad news that I was really still holding on to. Like, you know, what old beliefs and you know, like I get on this fast train, like I was going back to Whidbey Island because that's where it was safe, you know? And all of a sudden somebody said, well, maybe you could stay down in the desert a while longer. And I'm there like, like to make a dis different decision when faced with this in incidents that come to you that might be perceived as bad news, but they give you an opportunity to make a different choice. And I think that that's, that's where we're at right now for me is like, what is the choice that I'm going to make knowing that there's all of these obstacles because they're more, I don't see them as bad or good, but there, there's a lot of obstacles right now that we're faced with and how do we choose differently and how do we send it that light you're talking about instead of sending it the pity, that pity, I, I you know, I've always thought of pity pot, but thinking about people 
throwing their pity at me is like, oh no, please, not that. <laughs> and and we we do it constantly, the the whole world, and that's. I think that's been the biggest danger of having um, news because <laughs> there was a time when uh, people think that before the news, nobody knew what was going on in the other side of the world. But um, if you look at some of the petroglyphs and some of the, um, the cave art, it was very clear people were seeing things that were happening on other places on the planet, but they were seeing with their strong eye they were reading the stars and the galaxies and the cosmos and that's how they got their news Tr truly that this is mm -hmm. true um and now that we have the news and we have overpopulation on the planet we just have uh too many people feeding energies into situations where um we're we're not honoring, empowering people's own strengths, um, and we're projecting our own opinions on everything. Um, and so everything gets tricky because how are we helping? How are we actually helping if we're not working on transforming the energy? Um, mm -hmm. Right. I, I, we're so, I think we're in alignment with that, that we you know, we we were talking earlier about our, our shaman's cave page and, you know, that if you go to a lot of other shaman pages, there's all of this dissension and all of this fighting going on. We just don't allow it. Yeah. We just, it's just not, and I don't think until today we've really ever talked about how much we didn't allow it because, you know, um, Sar uh, I, Sylvia and I do all of the, this, yes, you can participate or no, you can't. And but that it's just not a it's not the place where we choose to live. And and furthermore, when you were talking, I just thought that the reason that we've been so successful in our podcast together for all of these years is that neither of us have ever seen each other except for in our divine light of, of each other. It's like I, I think that that's the respect that, you know, that you don't judge my my experiences as something like Oh, poor Renee. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, I just got to go through that. And, you know, we'll get back onto the topic. And and so I just think about in your own families and in, in your own relationships is where are you holding the people that you inter interact with all the time? Do you, you know, because do you hold them in their divine light or in your frustration of their light? Yeah, yeah, that, that's... It's a big one that people are working on right now. People are really looking at uh, how dysfunctional their relationships are, whether it's friends, lovers, but big one, family right now. That's mm -hmm. right now. That, that's, that, that actually does fit into the topic of more bad news because... Uh, <laughs> the bad news bear family. Well, because families are, are really being torn apart right now um, mm -hmm. because there's there's so much going on and everybody has their own beliefs and everybody mm -hmm. has their own perceptions. And so, again, the more that we can see people in their strength and light, even in our own family systems, um, and the more that we can speak from our heart. I gave an example um, on one of our shows that we did somewhat recently of, um, I did this um, uh, uh, pilot um, medical study with the University of Michigan um, uh, Medical School and we looked at how the medicine for the earth work affected uh, people who had heart attacks and suffered severe depression after their heart attacks, because that's a known thing, is people who have, have heart attacks oftentimes get depression afterwards. And so I taught people about uh, how to not accept bad news from their doctors. Mm -hmm. One of my students um his doctor said, I, I have to give you some news. And, and 
the guy said to the doctor, well, Sandra said that I'm not allowed to hear any bad news. <laughs> and so that's one story. But the story I was going to tell was um, uh, this guy had the worst relationship with his boss. She just they she was always screaming at him. And I taught people how to breathe through their hearts. And so I told him when he went in and his boss started fighting with him, just see her in her light, you know, just like I'm saying here, um, breathe through your heart, breathe gratitude through your heart. He came in Monday morning and she started screaming, um, and he followed my directions, and mid-sentence, she stopped. Mm -hmm. She stopped screaming. So, you know, with families, bad news, with everything, again, if we can move into a heart place, uh, we change the energy of the situation, and then we change how people respond and how people react. Mm -hmm. I'm having this experience where for the first time in my adult life, I'm living at somebody's house. You know, I've been a solo traveler for so long and in, and we do everything different. <laughs> I mean, and so this morning I'm there like, oh my God, you have to like think about absolutely every aspect of this decision before you make it. I mean, I must make a hundred decisions in a day. And I came into the room and I'm thinking like, well, how can I, how can I deliver this? <laughs> And then I realized that it wasn't, it wasn't my place to deliver anything, that it was my place to have my own boundaries and my own responsibilities around how I hold things. And, and it was like a really kind of an aha moment about, you know, how, how we do this throughout the week. Like, you know, like there's a lot of changes going on at work that feel bad, bad news. And, you know, and like, but how do I hold them? I just how do I understand it in a different light? Like, like this, people aren't one dimensional, right? They're multi dimensional. Like my boss might be making really bad decisions over here. But then last week, he went to he went to Israel to the Gaza Strip. And, and I and I said, when we were talking like all this other stuff went away. And they're like, Yeah, that's your real spiritual work. <laughs> like, like if you can see people in their divine spiritual work, then you know that the the other stuff that they're making, like that woman, they're like, well, you're only getting a little piece. You're only getting a little piece of that story as well. And and we make a whole big decision about one little piece of the story. And, and I think that we really have to consume this news and maybe munch it up and turn it into light before you eat another bite of that apple or something like that. I mean, I don't know if that makes sense, but it's kind of like relating to me, like all of the, all of the stimulus that's coming in that doesn't feel comfortable, mm -hmm. but doesn't mean it's not happening, but it's just not, not be my happening. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we're seeing people on the planet uh, right now, I'm seeing people um, at very, very moving into really different evolutionary states. So we're seeing a real split on that of um, getting so caught up in certain perceptions versus uh, taking a spiritual standpoint, working mm -hmm. with spirits on this of what's going on behind what's going on under what's the mm -hmm. what's the root of this and there are a lot of people who are really doing that deep work and so i'm seeing from the positive thing that i'm seeing on some of my facebook pages that i haven't uh, seen in my 40 43 years of teaching is um people are evolving uh, a lot faster into moving into different perceptions of dealing with bad news and, and dealing with things and, and taking more of a spiritual outlook. 
And I think that's really healthy because we have to we have to bring it all in. Mm -hmm. it has to be in balance. But it's like in in medicine, I used to say um, with soul retrieval that people go to doctors and they go to psychologists when they have a trauma, but they're not dealing with the spiritual mm -hmm. healing. And so uh, people who had been in therapy for 20 years would come to me for soul retrieval. I do a soul retrieval and they'd be healed in a second because they did everything except that last piece. Mm -hmm. Right. And yeah. it's not one doesn't proceed, you know, one doesn't preclude the other, you know, because I see a lot of people like, oh, I'm looking for that magic pill. I'm looking for, you know, there's so many magic pills out there right now. And I think I wrote that on on somebody's the somebody's well, um, a comment somebody made the other day is like we're not the magic pill that's not the magic pill you have to do the work and somebody got really mad at me for saying it and I'm there like you know Sandra and I we've done the work it's not like there's no easy way through this soul experience right, yeah. there just is not there's magic that happens to keep you awe inspired and to let you know that, yeah, you're connected and this is how, how it is, but it's, it's a lot of scrubbing. Yeah. I, I love that word scrubbing because we are being scrubbed <laughs> in levels that are very uncomfortable. And, and so again, um, when we hear bad news, sometimes we, um, we use it as a way to detach from our own feelings. Mm -hmm. You know, we can we can feel the pain of others, but we don't want to feel our our own pain. It's a really rich topic. There's a it's a really rich topic of how do we feed people's strength, but how do how do we also see how we're triggered by bad news, as um, as work that we have to do on ourselves so that we can help and transform at the same time. So there's, there's really a lot to it. Um, there's how do we take care of ourselves? How do we do our spiritual work and get different perspectives? Um, and how, how do we actually be an ally for people and for things on the planet? Um, you know, I don't say my poor plant. I, you know, I go, we're, we're going to bring you back. <laughs> you know, <laughs> sounds like we have three or four more topics on this. Cause one of the things we talked about was having a theme where we were going to journey on these topics. And it sounds like we just got about three or four more that we can um, journey on to keep bringing, cause we want to go deeper with you too. We want, we, you know, we, we've talked a lot about a lot of things over six years and we haven't run out of things to talk about. I mean, we talk in between our shows before our shows, there's lots to talk about. So we're going to stay with you. And so make sure you hit subscribe and, um, you know, share with your friends and you can donate for the show. And certainly you want to buy the new book, walking out of darkness. Well, I, I can't I, I can't get the title right, but it's a beautiful book, Walking Through Darkness. Walking and, Through Darkness. I, I guess we'd all like to walk right on out of the darkness. <laughs> and if you are going through challenging times or you know people who suffered a loss, that's what the book is about. It's a road mm -hmm. for it's a roadmap for how to get through loss and uh the most challenging times in your life when you don't have even a clue where to put your next step uh, that's the book that lynn roberts and i came together to write was two elders to give you a roadmap for how do you deal with all of this mm -hmm. it's a it's great i've read several of the chapters already and also i'll be teaching some um, windward classes this spring uh, for the, the college of psychic studies they'll be online uh, there's so and, and Sandra's teaching, but her class is full already. Uh, but there's, you know, there's there's ways to, you know, you don't have to s stay in the murk yourself. There's tools, and we're one of those tools. And 
we find from the comments that people make on our on our Facebook page and our YouTube channel is that we do offer you a hand through the darkness. And so we're we're happy to be that light. Absolutely. So yes, as Renee said, please subscribe and please like us. And if you write a comment, um, it really helps a lot. Mm -hmm. so. And I answer them. <laughs> All right. Thank you. And we'll talk to you soon. Blessings, everyone. Mm -hmm.